Hi everybody, it's Coco Booth and I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to use XDNA to determine your relationship to a person who you share a match with but you don't know where to start looking. You might know what side of the family or your family that that person is on but you're not exactly sure which branch to look on. So I was doing some research this morning and I said, you know what? Let me put something together really quickly and see if anybody else might appreciate um, this type of information in a tutorial. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and determine what my relationship is to Dorothy Grant. And so the questions I'm going to ask myself are, how is Dorothy Grant related to me? Where do I start? Which side of my family is she on? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to GEDmatch and I'm going to run a one-to-many beta report. Now it's important that you use the beta feature because if you go into the one right below, which is the one-to-many DNA comparison result uh, right here under the red, it does not show or yield any xDNA information, unfortunately. So you would have to go into the beta. So you're going to go in there and when you go into beta and you put in the kit number, um, you have an option. You can scroll through all your matches and look for who has xDNA or shares xDNA with you. Or you can go over here. Uh, do you see this arrow I'm circling? You would click on that uh, under the xDNA column. Up here is the header xDNA. Under that shows total CMs for xDNA. You would click on that little arrow and it will sort your xDNA uh, or this data by the xDNA column. So that's what I did. I wanted to bring up all the people who share xDNA and I ran this report um, under my cousin's kit and I'll explain why I did this in a few minutes. But anyway, just to get back to this, if you look uh, where my arrow is moving around here and the highlighted name Dorothy Grant that's the kit that I'm going to be looking at and and that's the kit that I'm going to try and determine or the person who I'm trying to trying to determine uh, shares how that person shares DNA with me or my father or in, in this case my cousin and I'll, again I'll tell you why I use my cousin in a minute so this person Dorothy Grant she shares 12.5 uh, xDNA with my cousin Donald. Let's go on to the next page. So in order to determine why that makes any sense, what, why is that relevant? Why is it important that she shares xDNA with my cousin? Well, if you share xDNA with something, you can use an X inheritance pattern chart. There are two charts. There's one for males and there's one for females. Since I'm trying to determ determine her relationship to one of my cousins who is a male, I'm going to use the male version of this chart, which I have displayed here for you to see. Now, if you look here at the bottom, you'll see my cousin's name, Donald. And if you look to the left, that's where his father would be, but it's grayed out. And then on the right is where his mother is, and that's um, in green. So the reason why the father is grayed out is because Donald did not inherit any xDNA from his father. He can only inherit it from his mother. So what we're going to do is I want to focus on Donald's maternal line. And so I'm going to go over to the next slide so that um, we can just zero in on that side of his branch and kind of just get rid of the other side because the paternal side has no information relating to xDNA. All right, so notes to consider before we start this. The first thing to consider is Donald is my father's half first cousin. And that's very important. And I think uh, one of the admins in this group, Dio, mentioned that it's important to test half cousins. And this is one of the reasons why I'm going to go through it now. So Donald is my father's half first cousin. Donald and my father share the same grandmother, but not grandfather. So the reason why I'm, I'm using Donald and not my father to determine my relationship to Dorothy Grant is because if I were to do this exercise with my father, there will be too many possibilities. So to narrow down the possibilities, I'm going to use Donald because his relationship to my father is limited. 
Donald and my father share the same grandmother, but not the same grandfather. So there's another tester that I haven't mentioned, and I, ha I didn't show you any information on this person. Um, it's, not, it's not relevant to show you any of that, but just to let you know, um, so that you understand my process of thinking while I'm going through this exercise, is there's another cousin that I have. He's a half cousin with my father, and he shares the same great grandmother, but not the same great grandfather with my father. And the same with Donald. He shares a half uh, he's a half cousin to Donald and he's a half cousin to my father as well. Dorothy does not match that half cousin or anyone under his line. And I'm going to show you now. So let's go through it. So here you can see Donald's name here, right? And so we know Donald's father's side is grayed out. So I just kind of got rid of that side of his family. So now we're going to go up to his mother. You're only going to go to whoever's in green. If they're grayed, that means that that person did not um, inherit any xDNA or um, Donald did not get any xDNA from that person. So his mother, obviously, he got xDNA from her. So now we're at a crossroads. Do we go to Donald's grandmother or we go to Donald's grandfather? Well, remember I said one of the things to consider is that Donald does not share the same grand, uh, he shares the same grandmother, but not the same grandfather. So that means that Donald and my father share this person, but they don't share this person, which is Donald's grandfather. So I put NA for not applicable or applicable. Um, that person, we don't, we don't even need to deal with Donald's grandfather because he's not related to me. So we're going to go from Donald's mother to Donald's grandmother, which is a row. Now the next part is relevant to um, the half cousin that I told you about. So the next one is Donald's uh, great grandparents, right? So this one is a row, great grand, uh, sorry, this is great grandfather. And this one is great grandmother. This great grandmother is not applicable. And the reason why is because that half cousin who I told you about he falls on the great grandmother's line and Dorothy Grant does not match him and does not match anyone under his branch. There are several people who tested from his side of the family. She does not match any of them, but she matches several people from the great grandfather's line. So you see how I'm working my way up using the half cousins. So now here we go. Great grandfather. I know for a fact that the xDNA flows through him. At least I'm 99.9% .9 sure. Nothing is ever 100%. So now here we are. We're on this level of the tree now. Where do we go next? There's only one option. This option is grayed out because the father cannot, uh, the great grandfather cannot inherit any xDNA from his father, only his mother. So the only other option would be this person right here which is, let me see, mother, grandfather, great, great, great. Actually, I meant to put second great here. Sorry about that. I put third great. This should be second great grandmother. So I know that Dorothy Grant is coming from the second great, his, uh, excuse me, Donald Sanks's second great grandmother. And then from there, then he could either be the third great grandfather. She could be related to the third great grandfather or Dorothy could be, be related to the third great grandmother. So, but anyway, you see all these greens over here, all of these I put NA on because they're not applicable anymore since this person was kind of wiped out, you know? So we're only going up this line. So that's basically how you figure out how, this is how you use the xDNA chart. Again, if you're starting from a female tester, then you need to use the female version because the greens, uh, the green boxes will be laid out a little bit differently. And I'll include links to um, how to find this chart, how to download it and fill in your own green boxes. All right, so the flow of relationship, this is the same chart. The flow of relationship is Donald his mother, and I have it up here, you can read along with me, Donald, his mother, his grandmother, his great-grandfather, his second great-grandmother, and then his 
third great grandparents and so on. So what do you do from here? What are your next steps? Your next steps are to determine your total shared centimorgans, autosomal centimorgans with the person you're trying to figure out how you're related to. You determine your total shared centimorgans. And the reason why you do that is because you're going to use those total shared centimorgans to estimate your possible relationship with that person. So you can use an autosomal chart, a centimorgan chart that shows you, okay, say if you have 40, if you share 40 centimorgans with a person, and don't quote me on this because I'm just making it up. If you share 40 centimorgans with a person, then you're probably most likely to be their third cousin. Again, I'm, I'm just guessing. Um, and what you do then is you use that information to determine how many generations back you need to search. So say I know that based on Santa Morgans that Donald and Dorothy are third cousins, making it up. Then I will say, okay, start here. Third cousins, second cousins, first cousins, siblings, boom. This is the person we're looking at. I'm trying to figure out who this ancestor is, which is the second great grandmother. I'm trying to figure out who she is because most likely she is going to be the shared common ancestor between Dorothy and Donald and thus my father. Because remember, Donald and my father are half first cousins. So I can use Donald in this instance to do this exercise and it will be more beneficial to use Donald because again, he's a half first cousin. So he limits the data. Let me go back. So thank you very much for listening. I hope I didn't run through this too quickly for you. I have to uh, get ready to go. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section. If you have anything you want to add, I'll be more than grateful to receive it. And have a wonderful day. Ciao.